here to, to sort of answer your questions and explore more deeply some of the issues uh, that were raised um, in, uh, in the film. So I'm going to throw it open to you, and if there are any questions. Uh... Come on now, this is New Hampshire. <laughs> Well, let me do this while you're sort of thinking and sitting and contemplating. What I'd like to do is pass the microphone to each of our panelists, have them maybe say a few words about their perspective on the uh, the case of Podolkowski, um, and uh, and then we'll we'll throw it back to you. So, Pavel, I'm going to begin with you. Uh, Katrina, first of all, I wanted to uh, thank you for uh, organizing this. This is a, a great event. Um, I'm very happy that uh, it's a full house and uh, very honored that uh, so many people here in uh, Concord are uh, interested in what my father uh, is going through. Uh, just uh, I'm not I'm hold up uh, because I really want uh, Catherine to uh, say a couple more words about the actual film that you saw. I uh, just wanted to highlight a uh, couple of key facts uh, that Katrina uh, touched upon. Uh, my dad's trial has uh, currently ended. We're waiting for the verdict that's going to come on December 15th. Uh, there are a couple of different outcomes that we are uh, thinking might end up happening. and. Um, I'm sure there will be questions about what's what's the expected outcome, so I'd be happy to go into detail about our, our expectations and hopes. Uh, so please ask and I'll, I'll give more detail. Uh, but I would like to pass it on to uh, Catherine, who would uh, certainly like to speak about the film that you just saw. Thank you. Um, first of all, or I guess I'm going to say second of all because Pasha already thanked you, but really thank you to each of you for coming and thank you Katrina um, who you have been she's been an incredible support to obviously to Pasha's father but uh, to this film and I'm glad you finally got to see it on a beautiful screen and it looks great Katrina's seen the film in the oddest of <laughs> circumstances <laughs> so she finally she, she earned the right to see it in such a beautiful yeah, setting so good. thank you for that um, and thank you, and John, and Pasha, always for um, coming. Um, I really actually don't want to say very much about it, because hopefully the film speaks for itself, and I'd rather hear what you all have to say. Um, but there are two things that I, I do want to say, and I, I usually say this before the film screens if I have the opportunity to. A lot of people ask me at venues like this, the first question that's usually asked is how I got involved in making the film and how was it that I came to collaborate with the Kharkovsky entourage to make the film. The reality is a lot of people in that group, the people that you see up on the screen, obviously, and Pasha ultimately cooperated with me to make the film, but the film was made actually completely independently film was intended to be um, a, a, an article of advocacy. It wasn't intended to tell you whether Mikhail Khodorkovsky is guilty or innocent. The film was really intended to be, and I, I don't even want to say an expose, just an examination of what has happened in Russia in the last now 20 some odd years. When I started making it, it was 20 years. And I really wanted each of you to kind of come to your own conclusions about it. And I always felt, going back to kind of the, the late 90s, which was when I first really thought that somebody should be writing about or talking about Mikhail Khodorkovsky in a, in a much more significant way, that he was and still is and will be on December 15th when his verdict is, is um, handed down, extremely representative in every way and kind of a distillation of everything that has been happening in Russia, good, bad, and otherwise, and everything confusing that's happening in Russia. And so that's the first thing, is that it was made independently. But I suppose the second thing I've alluded to 
but that is that when I first became interested in Pasha's dad, it was when he was on his rise. So it was never expected to be a tale of sort of the rise and fall. It was really, I just expected it was going to be the rise, and 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 where was this man going? And so that it has turned out, or that each turn has been what it has been, has just been something stunning, but always still very um, predictive, sadly predictive, of what at least I think is going on in Russia now. Um, so I, I said, I hope you all do have lots of questions follow up. Thank you. Um, I'm on this panel uh, because um, uh, the New Hampshire legal community has had a partnership with the with a uh, region in Russia, Vologda, which is about four or five hundred miles north east of uh, Moscow, and um, I've been heavily involved in that since 1998. And as part of that, I've been to Russia, I think, 15 times in that uh, time frame, and we've hosted uh, many, uh, I don't know, maybe 150 uh, <coughs> Russian. Um, mainly judges, but also lawyers and prosecutors here. And I have a lot of good friends in Russia, as all of us do, who have been involved in this project. Um, as to the uh, Kurakovsky case, I uh, emailed a good friend of ours in uh, Moscow. She's a law professor. She does a, um, a lot of work for the uh, at the European uh, Court of Human Rights. Uh, she just uh, wrote the first uh, book that they have in Russia for, for law schools on legal research and writing. In fact, a, 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 a United States law firm paid for that to be done, a uh, white case. But I asked her, what did you think of the Kurakovsky case, and uh, what did you think the average Russian thought of it? And I'll just read to you her email response. Uh, dearest Kathleen, I'm happy you will be on this panel. I'm also very glad that you will have a chance to talk to people who see the trial and the whole thing correctly as, as it is and not as it is interpreted by Russian TV. This is a case 100% made of nothing. This is just a revenge and the task is to keep Kordakovsky there as long as possible. Though I basically tried to follow the event, at least in general, I attended one of the trials this fall. I cannot say I found out something new, but when you see all this with your own eyes, it is a completely different impression. I would say that it was the most impressing slash depressing event for me for the last years. I will probably remember it for the rest of my life. As to the people's attitude, it seems to be changing step by step to a more positive. But the point is that there is no public discussion, no information, or very, very brief information in the official news. So mo most Russians either have no information or do not care. Uh, this is a separate problem. Also, most Russians hate rich people in general. Again, a separate problem. But still, I repeat, the absurdity of the second trial is so obvious that the opinion seems to be changing slightly. 